to, to persuade me that I should act differently or rule differently in this case, or not the rules don't apply to you or the law doesn't apply to you because somebody took money from Garrett's estate, it doesn't fly. It doesn't impress me. <laughs> Good afternoon. Let's go on the record. This is the matter of the guardianship of Garrett Dosh 99G020357. Mr. Linda Marquis via Blue Jeans, also joining us via Blue Jeans, Mr. Birchtold. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Jim Birchtold, Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada, bar number 5874, here on behalf of Garrett Dosh. Also joining us is Ms. Dosh. Ms. Dosh, can you hear me all right? Yes. Thank you so much. Ms. Goldsmith. Good morning. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Daryl Goldsmith, bar number 4270, on behalf of Travis and Melody Dosh. Ms. Brickfield. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Elizabeth. Okay, thank you. Elizabeth Brickfield, bar number 6236. I'm the guardian ad litem for Garrett Dosh. And I believe I heard Garrett in the background when this Dosh, I don't know if he's present or not. Ms. Dosh, yes, he... is Garrett there with you? Yes, he's on the computer. All right, thank you so much. Ms. Brickfield, I know you're not sharing your video, but just for the record, I can see Ms. Dosh, but I, I can't see Garrett, um, if that assists you, Ms. Brickfield, I don't know if you can I can see. put him on if you need him to. That's okay. I can ask. Do you want? I just wanted to clarify for the record whether or not he was there. Uh, but Ms. Brickfield, can you see uh, Ms. Dosh's screen? Yes, Your Honor. I can see Ms. Dosh, and can you see me now? We can. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, Thank I you. see Garrett. He's just over Ms. Dosh's right shoulder. Mm -hmm. There he is. He's Thank on you so his. Much. On his own computer over there. <laughs> Thank you. Also joining us is our Nevada judges. They have um, their video that is not sharing and they're not sharing audio. Also joining us is Rick Black, Mr. Black. Hello, Your Honor. And you can hear us all right. We can hear you. Thank you so much. So Thank on you. The on the calendar this afternoon, is uh, a number of things. First, the guardian's motion for reconsideration and or rehearing or in the alternative to make additional findings um, pursuant to NRCP 52B and for attorney's fees and costs. Garrett, uh, through Mr. Birchtold, has filed a limited opposition. Are there any other opposition or any other comments relative to that request? I'm going to ask, oh, ask Ms. Goldsmith. Your Honor, our our position is that um, there was no abuse of discretion. There were no issues with regard to the order, and it was appropriate. Ms. Brickfield. Uh, and, Your Honor, I join with Ms. Goldsmith and Mr. Burstall. I'm going to ask um, first Mr. Black. Mr. Black. Yes, Your Honor. Do you have anything you want to say relative to that issue? Uh, sure. I appreciate the honor of addressing the court. Sadly, this case has gone on now for 21 years, 22 years nearly. When uh, Ms. Dosh finally elevated the issues back in 2015 due to the Attorney General's statewide investigation of abuses by predatory attorneys through the guardianship system, we were able to get the CPA who controlled Garrett's funds from roughly 2003 until 2015, investigated and convicted of theft and exploitation. Uh, Mr. Black, the three I hate to interrupt you. I, I hate to interrupt you, but I'm going to ask you about specifically that request for reconsideration. We yes, have a couple of items on, so. If you want to make yeah. a general statement, I'll let you do that. Or I was planning on just asking everybody on the call uh, 
their position on each of the issues we have on the calendar today. So would you like to make a general statement or would you like to address um, that specific issue? Yes, ma'am, I was just building foundation. My apologies. I fully support all the funds requested from both Reuben Brown Accounting and the Marshall Willick Law Firm. The three attorneys that preceded them had set this guardianship to exploit Garrett. And thankfully, that team stepped in to salvage the guardianship and protect Garrett. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Dosh, is there anything else you'd like to say? Relative uh, to no, that? I... I agree with Rick Black. They rescued Garrett. Uh, however, we've had a lot. Of, it wasn't entirely their fault, anything that has gone wrong. Everybody uses the same excuse these days, COVID-19, but it makes it very difficult to get records and uh, other things that we needed when everybody is ill or has family members that are ill. Anything else? Not at the moment. Okay. So the motion um, for reconsideration or rehearing is denied. Uh, it fails under the statute to raise any issues that would require reconsideration or rehearing. Council will move to the next issue on the calendar today, which is the notice of hearing on the third accounting and proposed budget. Uh, I'll start uh, as I did before and guide us through this. Mr. Birchfold, any objections or concerns? Uh, no, Your Honor. Actually, the, the accounting, uh, I reviewed it carefully and it looked pretty standard to me. I didn't see anything unusual. So no objections. Thank you so much, Ms. Brickfield. Your Honor, I had some concerns with the uh, with the characterization of certain things that could not quite be explained as guardian fees. For example, a nine sixteen of nineteen five hundred dollar payment to American Express is somehow characterized as guardianship fees, and I don't go to the to the format of the accounting, and then there's another one on 11 8 of 19 guardianship fees, 535.29. So I don't think the accounting meets the statutory requirements. We certainly didn't get the backup, but I also believe, Your Honor, that enough time has gone by and enough attention has been paid to these accounting issues that it's in Garrett's best interest to move forward at this time. Ms. Guyman. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Ms. Goldsmith here. I'm so, I, I apologize, Ms. Goldsmith. I, That's all right. I apologize. Um, I agree with Ms. Brookfield. Um, I do have some issues with regard to characterization. I do have some issues with regard to um, some of the budget items, but I think it's in, tra in um, Garrett's best interest to go forward and accept it at this time. Mr. Black, is there anything you'd like to say relative to the third accounting? No, Your Honor. Ms. Dosh, is there anything you'd like to say relative to the third accounting? I don't believe so. Ms. Dosh, would you like to address specifically the issues raised by Ms. Brickfield and Ms. Goldsmith about the characterization um, of certain expenditures. There, there's a characterization or a description of expenditures um, as guardian fees when this court has not granted guardian fees. So the description could be misleading um, or it could be an attempt to improperly request guardian's fees, it, it's rather unknown what that means. Um, 
when there's a payment well, to a credit card. have to know card. who the check was made out to. So she said on September 16th, 2019, there is a payment to an American Express credit card. Believe that you have an American Express credit card personally that's not related to the guardianship. And there's a payment towards that credit card that's described as guardianship fees. Can you give me the last four digits of that card? Is Brickfield, I don't believe the accounting has the last four digits on it. Because Garrett's got an American Express card also. So it could have gone for his new Telegraphica device. I don't know. I'd have to see it really. So we'll give you the page number in a moment. Ms. Dosh, I think the issue is that it goes to pay any credit card, whether it's your credit card or his credit card. And the description is not the description of the expenditure, right? Um, but the description of a classification that only the court um, can approve. Did you want to talk about that description? I would have to see a copy of the check. That was two years ago. I have no idea. Ms. Brickfield, do you have a page number? And let me ask Ms. Dosh, do you have the accounting there with you? No. No? Okay. Um, so I don't know if we gave you a page number since you don't have it there with you that uh, yeah, yeah, that, that would, would be helpful. helpful. Is that right? If you could email it to me. Ms. Brickfield? The, the name of the page is, the number of the page is Dosh 1435. The, this is the 916 of 19 one. It's detailed as guardian fees. The name of the vendor is American Express 12001. Then there's an account uh, check number. And then it says expense $500. And then next to it is the bait stamp number, and the explanation is receipt not included. The one in November is on page, I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor, um, for, uh, 1436 uh, on. 1118 of 19, Guardi is the same American Express uh, number. It's an amount $535.29 with a Bates number and then says receipt not included. Uh, there's also one on page 1437, 1210 of 19, American Express, same account number same check, and then it's for 548.15, receipt not included. So to the extent that these, uh, that the accounting characterizes these items, there's one on 212 of 20, page 1438. Again, American Express, same account number, $500, uh, receipt not included. So to the extent the accounting include such items, 14, page 1439, 413 of 20, Guardian Fees, American Express, $143. And to the extent, as you said, Your Honor, it's an attempt to uh, characterize things when receipts or what the expenditure is can't be identified. I think that going forward, Ms. Das should uh, work to avoid such characterizations. Well, I Again, think yes. that they are Walmart groceries. That's what it sounds like, because it's all pretty much the same. 500 and something, and that's usually what, because we don't go often. It's uh, almost 100 miles from our residence. So we 
will go once every two weeks or a month, and and it sounds like it would be groceries. What they're saying. Your Your Honor, it's this is Dara Goldsmith. If it's helpful, I can share my screen. Something else. Oh. Ms. Dosh, who's well, there with tell you? Just told you it's something else. Uh, my name is Rebecca Donaldson. I'm helping her understand. She was misunderstanding that the question was not specifically to the charges, but as to what the classification of the charges was. And I just told, explained to her what you guys were getting at, that she needs to not classify it as guardianship. But if it is indeed for groceries, she needs to put it down for groceries. Yeah. And if it, whatever it is, and to provide receipts or backup for that. Ms. Donaldson, are you an attorney? No, I'm not. She asked me to help her. That's why I'm not on screen. Garrett's tutor. Yeah, I'm uh, st are... starting to help as Garrett's tutor. Okay, how are you? Are you not related to Garrett? No, I am not. All right, are you just a, a friend of Ms. Dosh? Yes. All right. Okay, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ms. Goldsmith. This is Rebecca, and she is another tutor for Garrett. Thank you. Continue, Ms. Goldsmith. Your Honor, if it's helpful, I can share the screen with the pages, and then if Ms. Brookfield wants to ask the specific questions, I can share my screen and, and, and assist on that if that's helpful, because I understand that Ms. Dosh does not have the accounting with her, which is unfortunate. Um, because that's what's at issue today. Um, and I'd be happy to pull up those pages on my screen and share that. Ms. Brickfield, would you um, like to do that? That would be helpful, Your Honor, because I think if Ms. Dosh looked at the accounting pages, she would realize that when a vendor is, that it identifies vendors so that if a trip was made taken to Walmart and expenditures were made there, the accounting identifies that. It identifies the vendor as Walmart, for example. And so that I, might I refresh her, me her memory. To, let me explain a couple of things, Sue, that I am certain that Ms. Dosh understands before you ask those questions and we share the screen. Sure. So Ms. Dosh, I am, um, what I'm hearing from all of the attorneys um, and parties is that they encourage the court and the court certainly would approve costs related to food or toiletries or purchases of necessities for Garrett. Um, and there has never been um, in this case an allegation that money was spent on necessities or food to out of the ordinary, right? And so I'm happy to approve those expenses for all of those necessities um, for Garrett. And certainly um, Walmart is somewhere that I know from years of these accountings that, that you frequent. Um, the concern is here is that it's not for food, clothing, personal items, necessities, at Walmart, the concern is that the description on the page is guardian fees. And guardian fees are something um, that is a whole nether classification of expense that requires a special request to me. And in many cases is absolutely necessary and is in the protected person's best interest but that hasn't happened. And so when we see an expenditure for something that the court has not allowed, it raises a red flag. So it, that's not something the court has allowed. So there shouldn't be any guardian fees from prior years. Um, and, and that's what she's worried about. Um, and that's the concern, it's that description. So she's gonna ask you a couple of questions. Ms. Dosh, do you okay. understand that? Do you have any questions about that? No, I don't, but I would, okay. again, I'd have to see it and if Dara is willing to let me see that's what they're. That's what she's gonna do right yeah. now. So yeah. 
gold Because there hasn't so been any guardianship fees. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Brickfield. So my question to Ms. Dosh is just simply, does she have any explanation as to what this represented? This this one, for example, on 8, 8 21 of 19 for $1,000, what that represented. Okay. When they bundle or put things in a bucket, accountants, I'd have to ask the accountant what guardianship fees meant to her. What is in guardianship fees? Well, Ms. Tosh, can you explain why other categories and other pay vendors, and I think believe vendors are payees, are set out but these specific guardian fees are all payable to American Express and the ones we've discussed, they do not, well, there is no receipt Well, let's ask Rick provided. Black because he is an accountant, so let's see what he thinks that that would be. The... Well, what they're asking is what did you use the credit card for? Miss, Miss Dodge, yeah. did Miss... Can I address oh. the court, Your Honor? Miss... If I could just complete my question to Ms. Dosh, which is Ms. Dosh, did Mr. Black prepare this accounting? No, he did not. But I am sure that he was instrumental in getting it prepared. It was done by the Reuben Brown, but I am sure that Rick Black probably helped. And I don't know what they would bundle or bucket under guardianship fees. Your, your Honor, to, to help with the confusion here, I think there are three or four entries that Ms. Brickfield is asking about. I did not look at this accounting prior to today. It, it was submitted to the court, I think, over a year ago. Um, I wish that Ms. Brickfield would have brought these objections to the attention of Ms. Dosh months ago, as she could have. Uh, but let's highlight the line items, and we'll go back and understand the detail that was behind them. Uh, these are surprises to me, but I do know the accountants bucketized certain costs that had receipts behind them, and we obviously can't see that on this page. But she makes a great point, it's appropriate, and uh, let's get the list and let's get the data to support it so that everybody has transparency on what these expenses were for. Ms. Dosh doesn't have an American Express account. She can't be paid through American Express, nor is she paid fees without the court's approval. Everybody understands the rules. Ms. Brickfield, do you have any other questions? Um, it would be very helpful if Ms. Dosh would provide a detailed explanation for these uh, guardian fees in this particular accounting. And for the record, I have asked Mrs. Ms. Dosh in the past to explain the guardian fees, and I do believe that at our hearing on the earlier accounting this came up, but if Mr. Black believes that he can assist Ms. Dosh to provide a more detailed explanation of these accounting, of these entries that have been designated as guardian fees in this accounting, I would appreciate that.
over here for the court's order to show cause. Okay, so that takes care of one motion. Any preliminary issues we need to take care of? Do you want to make sure that she's put on house arrest? Okay, why don't you give me the statue? I'm not putting up with any of the crap here today. I'm rather frustrated. Um, I'm not I'm, I'm rather frustrated um, to the extent that Ms. Dosh has been ordered to provide receipts from um, Judge Ochoa at a certain um, dollar amount. But those receipts uh, have not been provided. I will again require, as I have in the past, that all expenditures above $200 that receipts accompany those expenditures uh, and the backup documents are included in the accounting mm -hmm. um, each and every year moving forward. We have had this very same objection relative to um, accountings um, and the classification of certain expenditures as guardian fees without uh, being provided with um, any receipts or backup documentation to clarify the expenditure. In fact, I, in written orders, have characterized this very same action of American Express payments in round numbers like $1,000, $5,000 being categorized as guardian fees as an effort to mislead this court, as an effort to perhaps uh, go back and reclassify uh, expenditures and hide the true uh, expenditure. I have said over and over, this is a simple estate. We rely upon the money that comes out. It is rather consistent. There is a schedule. It is predictable. And the money that, that income that comes in is so predictable. The expenses that are actually, um, expended on behalf of Garrett by Ms. Dosh, so reasonable. There is not a red flag or anything within these accountings that makes me believe that Edith is somehow, you know, driving a Lamborghini um, or, or spending money on, on some other unjustified, um, lavish expense. I don't believe that she is. However, she continues to blame the court and others for the actions 
in the last few years of this case, when it, she hasn't retained receipts, mm-hmm. she hasn't characterized these expenditures in a way um, that would promote transparency with the court. I do not know that any of these attorneys realistically would ever object to a request for guardians' fees. I think that it's clear when you go through the history and the decades of this case that Ms. Dosh spends a lot of time with Garrett, that she's his 24-7 caretaker, and she may, in fact, be entitled to fees, and fees may be appropriate to her, given the time and attention that she gives to Garrett. But she has to ask me first. It's not my high standard. That's not some obstacle I'm throwing in her way to make it hard for her, or make this difficult. These are the rules that the Nevada legislature has set out. These are the same rules for everyone. Can't go back in time and recreate or relabel this accounting and the expenditures in a way that's misleading or in a way that tries to somehow get the court to affirm and accept guardian fees. It concerns me. I have addressed this previously. It has been a big problem. It continues to be the same objection um, relative to this issue of fees. Accountants don't decide what is and what is not guardian's fees, especially without a receipt. It is only the court that consider and deem something guardian's fees. That's a legal determination. Accountants cross the line in taking something that should be a black and white accounting, something that has no legal determinations, that does not make substantive decisions and classifications that only the court can do. And it becomes like some persuasive document, a motion or a legal argument instead of the accounting that it should be. This accounting does not assist the guardian. It is not a tool that benefits the guardian. This accounting could have been done um, by Ms. Dosh. These are receipts that could have been kept by her. There's been discussion in this case before from all of the attorneys suggesting that perhaps instead of Ms. Dosh having to have the burden of, that every other guardian has in the state of Nevada, of having to submit to the court annually these accountings because she's either unwilling to do it or she's unable to do it um, or or, or she just can't meet the standard that's required, that instead of this accounting, that she be given a monthly amount of money that she can spend on the costs associated with Garrett, like utilities, groceries, household supplies, automobile expenses. Each and every month that's agreed upon, and then she wouldn't have to file this accounting. At every turn, she's declined. Ms. Dosh fights with everyone, fights with the court, refuses to follow my orders. She fights with the Nevada legislature, she refuses to follow their orders. She fights with Mr. Birchtold, Ms. Brickfield, Ms. Goldsmith. The guardian ad litem, Ms. Brickfield, who represents Garrett's best interests. Mr. Birchtold, who represents Mr. Uh, Dosh's desires and represents those to the court. In 20 years, 
been through at least 10 attorneys. She's gone through several proceedings to re be removed from at least three judges. She's been admonished by every judge over the 20 years who's presided over this case. Honor, there is an exception. Mr. Black, and time and again, this is the exact same objection that we've previously dealt with. This is not a new objection. No, my, it is my not accept mere, Mr. Black, I'm speaking. I'm sorry. This is not merely an accounting error. It is not a mathematical error. This is an attempt to misconstrue, to mislead the court, the accounting division, the attorneys. Mr. Black, I appreciate that you have your hand raised and I will allow you to speak again I remain very concerned. I am concerned that at a minimum, Ms. Dosh does not understand what is required. I say that because we've dealt with the same objection before. I say that because her friend had to explain to her the conversation. I say that because it continues 20 years later to the same concerns. Look back at the initial accountings um, from the minor guardianship. There were similar problems, similar issues with receipts, delayed accountings, the statements from Ms. Dosh to the court at the time of the minor guardianship more than 20 years ago, almost identical her statements in the last year. At a maximum, Ms. Dosh is attempting to defraud the court and take payments of a thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, over the course of time that are paid to an American Express account, categorizes guardian fees in a case where no guardian fees have been ordered and no re receipts have been provided. So it concerns me. I am unsure where in the spectrum of my minimum and maximum Ms. Dosh resides. It has been my concern, it continues to be my concern. I am going to approve this accounting because quite frankly, I am unsure that as Ms. Dosh has not retained receipts as ordered by the court and required by statute to meet her obligation, that she will be able to produce those receipts has already been required to produce the receipt by me, by others, by the statute. The receipt was not included here. I'll allow her certainly to file any supplement to the record that she'd like to, to file. I, I just don't know that continuing this um, makes any sense. Uh, we have the accounting. It's not enough. It's insufficient. 
I'm accepting it though, because I don't know that she can create an accounting that is sufficient. If she hasn't retained the records required. Um, I do not want my approval of the accounting to be construed as some reach back or approval retroactively of guardian's fees um, in this case, because it is not. Um, I will say again that perhaps guardian's fees are appropriate and necessary. It's not the first time I've said that. I've said that hearing after hearing, time after time, tried to create creative solutions that would help Miss Dosh and assist her. Um, quite frankly, there are very few uh, options left. Mr. Black, you wanted to say. Thank you, Your Honor. I was involved in every step of the accounting for the first, for the budget, for the inventory, for the first, second, and third accountings to the court. I just want to assure the court that we have not disrespected the judge, you, in this case. I also want to correct the record that Judge Cynthia Diane Steele, there were no issues with her actions between 2016 and 17 when we finally got this case elevated that resulted in the criminal conviction of the previous guardian of the estate who was never transparent on how Mr. he was Black, spending. Mr. Black, I'm just going to interrupt you. Um, I'm not sure that's an accurate representation. I appreciate um, that you don't think Judge Steele admonished her. I do. Um, and. And, and I think I've, I've been through that before. Um, yeah, just, just one last comment, Your Honor, and yes. that is that you made it, and previous judges, and the legislature, and NRS, made it very clear that guardians are retained to retain all receipts. Ms. Dosh had done that. I reviewed those receipts. When we hired Fred Biederman, he said, I've done a bunch of these. I'll take care of it because we understand the issues in the case. Attorney Fred Biederman lost those receipts and did a very terrible accounting, which we rejected twice before he ultimately submitted it to the court and appropriately was objected to by Ms. Goldsmith and Ms. Brickfield. I think she was on the case at that time. We then turned the case over to Lynn Hughes. Lynn Hughes equally volunteered to do the accounting. He claimed he knew exactly how to do it, and he failed in that effort. Both of those attorneys lost receipts that were given to them. Shame on Rain that she did not make copies of those receipts so that she could retain them. My disappointment, and again, my apologies to the court because I was deeply involved in all the work that was conducted between and communications between Rain and the Reuben Brown Accounting Service, we had all the receipts for the third accounting. I don't think there was a single gap, but I did not, I missed these line items. Our apologies to the court. We will get this corrected and we certainly appreciate the court's patience for this surprise. Thank you. I, let, let me be very clear. I want to be transparent in my thoughts so that everyone understands. This is a very, very simple accounting. I have thousands of adult guardianship cases that come before me and I see hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of accountings each year. This is not a complicated accounting. The same exact amount of income comes in each month. The expenditures are not unreasonable generally by Ms. Dosh. They are predictable monthly expenses, utilities, food, gas. There are hundreds and thousands 
of guardians representing themselves without attorneys, without accounting firms, without bookkeepers, filling out these accounting forms on their own and doing it well. Maybe difficult, maybe time consuming, maybe not the best way to spend a Sunday afternoon. I give you all of that. But it is what is required. There's our ways in which Ms. Dosh could simplify this process for herself. She is at times her biggest enemy. And she creates for herself more work, more problems um, by her decisions. I'd encourage Ms. Dosh to talk to Brickfield, Birch told about other options, other ways that she could simplify, be more efficient, expedite the accountings, how she retains records or receipts, the way in which she does things. I think it would be helpful for her. Um, Ms. Brickfield and Ms. Uh, Mr. Birch told are tasked uh, with a position that is consistent um, with Ms. Dosh. Garrett's desires and what's in Garrett's best interest. I'm sure that they would both be very happy to give her suggestions about things that would help her. Um, and it may save her a whole bunch of time down the road. Um, so I'd encourage her to do that. Council, is there anything else? Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Birchtold to prepare the order from today. Is there anything else I can do today? I would like to say something. You talk about 20 years of guardianship. For 12 of those 20 years, a CPA was in charge of Garrett totally in charge of Garrett. I had nothing to do with it. He stole over $300,000 and then I had something to do with it. But those 12 years, he did all the accounting, he spent the money, he stole the money, and it was called a court-imposed guardianship over Garrett and his estate. Ms. Dosh? Let me just correct a couple of things that you just said. First, this CPA is no friend of mine. Please understand. He's a horrible guy that took money that wasn't his. I didn't appoint him. I didn't find him. I'm happy that finally, finally, there's a judgment and perhaps will collect, and that will benefit Gar uh, Garrett's estate, okay? Yes. But you were the guardian of the person during that time. You were tasked with certain things. You were ordered to cooperate with him and discuss things with him. And in fact, you selected him, not the court. In a proceeding to remove you as guardian of the person and estate, Short of going to evidentiary hearing, you sought out a settlement agreement with one attorney. And as part of that settlement agreement, you asked that the attorney, all of the money be held in his account because there were allegations that you had misappropriated funds, failed to file accounting similar to the allegations that are here today. And so at the last minute, the 11th hour, you negotiated yourself out of that hearing and you were able to remain, but as some type of safety valve, counsel together decided that your attorney would act as the person who would sign off on the checks, who would have control of the money. You fired that lawyer and you got another one. And the new lawyer renegotiated the terms of the settlement agreement. And at your specific request, you selected somebody else to hold the money. 
somebody else to be in charge of the money in lieu of you being removed. You selected the accountant. So for you to put on back to the court or that I said something wrong or I misinterpreted those 12 years is absolutely wrong. I'm sorry that that money was stolen from Garrett. The attorneys who are here today, they hate it too. Everybody that's been involved in this case is disgusted by his behavior. But his behavior, his stealing of that money is not an excuse today or somehow does that vindicate you or relieve your obligation to play by the rules. These aren't rules that were created specifically for you. These isn't me holding you to a higher standard than anyone else. These are the rules. He stole money, yeah. That's why today, with the assistance of those who have come before me, I look at page 1434 of your accounting and have questions about the $1,000 on the American Express bill with no receipt called guardian fees. It is my obligation and duty to dig, to be alerted to red flags by counsel and anyone else, including Mr. Black, who would like to speak on your behalf who's not related to you and is not an attorney representing you to hear about what's going on. If I just let it go that because somebody else stole from Garrett that you are somehow absolved and you don't have to meet your obligation or your duties, that would be fundamentally wrong for me to do. So any argument or attempt to persuade me from holding you to a high standard. And by the way, I'm not, right? Because I'm accepting this accounting, even though I have a lot of concerns. Because I think it's in Garrett's best interest. And I think you cannot recreate this accounting. So to persuade me um, that I should act differently or rule differently, in this case, or not the rules don't apply to you or the law doesn't apply to you because somebody took money from Garrett's estate, it doesn't fly. It doesn't impress me. It's not moving the dial, right? Yeah, somebody took money from him. I'm gonna make sure that doesn't happen again. And I appreciate that you are his mother, but I will tell you Nine times out of 10, the person who steals the money is directly related, the protected person. So I appreciate that you feel victimized by the accountant. You picked him. You did so in an effort to save your own funds, all right, from an evidentiary hearing that was gonna remove you as guardian. That wasn't the first time, wasn't the last time, and now we got the same issues again. So, yes, I'm going to hold you to a high standard. And, yes, it's not going to be easy. But to remind me, like I don't remember, like I didn't spend days and hours and weeks in this office pouring over the history in this case and every accounting and every document. Um, like it's not seared into my brain cells uh, for the rest of my life. It. it you discount me. I remember. I remember it exactly. I will tell you chapter and verse. Um, I understand that you lived it, but now I feel the weight of it. All right? And I'm not sure that anyone else does. Thank you, counsel. Mr. Birchhold. see your moving. Thank you, everybody.